you know, every now and again, life throws you a bit of a curveball. And I certainly didn't see this coming. And my guess is, neither did you. Right, let's kick things off with a bit of a question for you lot to answer. And that would be, if you could name a brand that was considered the most disruptive in the golf industry in the past couple of years, who would it be? And I would argue that brand would be PXG. And I've got a feeling they're gonna disrupt a little bit more. But this time, it isn't a golf club. It is in fact, it isn't a curveball as I first suggested, but a golf ball. Yep, PXG have released the Extreme Golf Ball. And as ever, they ain't holding back. So in today's video, I'll be looking at both dry ball data, which I collected earlier, but we're also out here on the golf course to get some reality. How does this thing sound? How does it feel with a wedge in hand? And how does it perform in outside conditions? But I've also got that dry ball data to hand. This is a big move from PXG. Get in the hole, get in the hole. So far, what you've seen me hit was driver, then eight iron, that was a 58 degree wedge. And I'm gonna give you my evaluation on the new PXG extreme golf ball and please don't go anywhere because there are some pretty severe shocks coming in terms of that dry ball data that i collected and if the uh well if the real performance out here on the golf course is anything like the dry ball data pxg have got an interesting ball on their hands so what is it that bob parsons feel is so special about this golf ball well first of all how is it put together it is a three-piece construction 338 dimples and a urethane cover it certainly puts it in the premium category and some independent data from golf labs produce performance that suggests this ball is a contender but as you know i don't like any third-party data i like to see it from the perspective of the average golfer so that's enough about what it's about it's enough about what pxg say what it's about we're going to find out what the average golfer thinks of it out here on the course at Hollywell Golf Club. It's time to reload the driver. Well, that's a decent solid ball. Fired off the club face. It sounds and feels fast. It's a fair old bump to be honest with you. That's a decent drive from my perspective. But let's go back into that dry ball data and kick it off with what I collected earlier on today up on Trackman Hollywell Golf Club. To be honest with you, I see nothing different than what I would expect to see from a premium golf ball and that is spin number in that sort of low 2000s. Um, that's all I can say. Launch was similar to what I've seen before from many golf balls I use. Spin number was maintained in terms of consistency. Ball speeds are maintained, but they're exactly where I would expect them to be with the kind of premium ball we're up against, which is the likes of the TP5, Pro V1s, the Chrome Soft and such like. So in terms of driver, what I'm seeing is it certainly matches all of those balls without doing anything different. But then things started to get a little bit interesting in terms of dry ball data. There's an important note to mention right now, and that is anybody who watches the channel long term will know that I really struggle to get high spin in terms of my mid irons. Well, my irons start the bag to be quite honest with you. And it started hitting eight iron gathering data and straight away I started to sit up and take a little bit of note because my spin number was consistently above 7,000. Now with eight iron, anything between seven and 8,000 revs is considered to be a real good number. Once again, no drop off in ball speed, no increase in launch, no other parameters affected, but that spin number was probably as high as I've ever seen me record on a video. So that is hugely impressive. I've now got eight iron in hand. What's it do out on the golf course? Well, first of all, that's an absolute solid strike. The ball has got no deviation right nor left. We're right on the pin. We've got a camera that's hopefully picked that up because I can't quite see that one land. We're slightly into a bit of a breeze and that's the bit that interests me. Does that high spin start to see the ball hover a bit? But that was a penetrating ball flight. Really difficult to judge reaction on greens right now in the UK in the winter. So I'm really thinking that ball is going to pitch and stop. But the performance of that shot and the others that I've hit outside on the golf course so far has sort of matching what we've seen in terms of dry ball data. And so far, 
so good. A couple of short shots in now, sort of 50 yards, half shots. So really just seeing if we can get a little bit of check on these two that you see me play. Now again, I've got camera perched up on green and I can't quite see the reaction. And again, we're playing winter greens a little bit softer. But to me, there was a little bit of grab in there. Great feel off the club face. And I think this is the bit that is so different from, I don't care what dry ball data says, I want my ball to feel a certain way. And it's that element of softness that you get into like so wedges but then you feel like there's a crisp sort of grab on it as well and it does both of those things so again here hitting off some uh, we'll try a few putts shortly this is the bit that's really important to me people talk about golf balls performance in terms of driver not really that interesting if i'm honest with you i don't want to see a, a ball that spins mega high or nothing but they're fairly consistent but when you get down to the short end of the bag i think this is what really separates golf balls up in terms of what i want to see at least and again down that short end really good we're going to roll a couple of putts in now and then i'm going to talk to you about some real interesting data that i collected with a wedge in hand and this is the bit that really surprised me. One thing to note as well as, and they reference it themselves, PXG, is there is a very sort of strong alignment aid, um, black line, and then a little two fine lines left and right to help with alignment. And when you get that one ball lined up and then uh, any sort of putter with an alignment aid at the back, it's, uh, yeah, it's very simple, but very effective. Quick roll with putter. Again, winter greens and <laughs> how did that not go in they feel good off the face i've ran a couple of putts which you can watch now and again what i'd expect really from it's a premium ball i mean there's no getting away from that that comes with a problem though the one that i'm going to discuss before we get to uh, these wedge numbers i think oh we'll do wedge numbers first so what did this thing do when we come to testing wedges well what it did was spin incredibly high and once again higher than i normally achieve no matter how many times I hit this thing, it was over 10,000 revs of spin every ball that I hit. Now that's interesting, but arguably most golfers who try a premium golf ball will get over 10,000 revs of spin. But then I switched up and used another premium ball. But all I can tell you is my spin dropped significantly. I'm more in line with what I normally achieve, to be quite honest with you, seven, maybe not even over 8,000 revs. I turned to Hannah and we still had the camera on and made the switch up and then I went back in to the uh, PXG ball to see if there was some kind of weird thing going on with my swing in the few balls that I'd hit with the other premium ball and it jumped back up to 10,000 revs. So it was incredibly good performing with wedge in hand and I think that coupled with what it does in a time was very surprising. Driver was exactly where I'd have expected it to be. Out here on the golf course it's got some great feel and sound but there is an issue so the question is what is the issue with this ball well earlier on this afternoon i posted a question on our members forum uh, within our youtube thing that's going on right now and i uh, announced the fact that we'd be doing this review today and posted later on tonight and i told them what the price was and everyone's feedback was the same in basically they're expecting a lot from this ball and even then they're not sure it's really pitched in at the right price and i'm not either this is going to be 44.99 in terms of uk pounds i think it's 39.99 us dollars now that is right up there with those premium golf balls we mentioned earlier and in terms of performance it's every right to be at that price because it does exactly what those balls do i think if we did blind testing across the board on those balls i've just referred to i think you'd really struggle to find a difference but the problem is this is brand new to market and what i expected was to make a bigger splash from pxg would be to be far more aggressive with their pricing to get this ball into golfers hands get some loyalty get some um get golfers impressed by it but now they're asking you a question asking you to swap out of a ball that you've tried and tested for years maybe save a fiver at best and switch into their ball and give it a try so i think that's a much bigger ask and that surprises me a little bit so what i'd like to see is a move in the price points and maybe pxg have been very aggressive in their marketing and the sort of the way they've pitched products in over the last couple of years maybe that's something we'll see but i did expect it to be launched at a lower price point than it has 
but in terms of overall performance super impressed with it like i said it does everything a premium golf ball should do the only one thing that many will pick up on that i can't um give you any sort of answer is on durability once i've played this for a few rounds i mean don't get me wrong that ball took a fair old bit of hammer in terms of dry ball data and out here on the course this afternoon but i can't tell you in terms of durability how long these things are going to last but then i could also say that uh, i don't keep hold of these things too long before i lose one so durability is never an issue for me anyway that's me done it's very much a first look at this golf ball i would really like to get lou out the pro shop and get his take on these as well because uh, that dry ball data in particular was really interesting let me know your thoughts are pxg extreme golf balls going to find a way into your bag or is that price point going to be a little bit too off-putting as ever thank you for watching and i'll see you all tomorrow night